Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everyone and welcome to episode 113. This is RV Talk Radio. My name is Rob. And yes, I swore to everybody that I was taking the summer off. And uh, I I did. I was going to take a couple more weeks off before I started doing regular episodes, but I just couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it. You know why, don't you? (laughs) I blame it all on Line Screw, which is a, a, a channel up in Canada. And yes, uh, he put out a video just, just uh, was amazing. And then another person put out a, v- a video that was amazing. And so I thought, oh my gosh, I can't sit back and just watch this happen. So I, I, I of course, you know me, I just had to get my, uh, I have to get my two cents in. So let's discuss what I saw and let's discuss the subject. Well, just a couple days ago, good old line screw up there in Canada. He does a pretty good channel, and boy, he's got some good talent when it comes to uh, editing. Decided to make a video about the Bob Nation. Yes, the Bob Nation. Bob Wells, uh, his channel, uh, CheaparVLiving.com. And uh, it's no secret that I haven't been kind of um, on board on this too. And yes, when I watch his shows and I watch his channel and I do catch some of them as much as I can stand uh the first thing I think of is cult (laughs) first thing I think of is someone uh trying to get followers uh, and in this new terminology the bob nation and uh before I go more into that um I I do want to refer to you that in my description there's two videos you must see one is from Line Screw. He did a funny, funny parody about the Bob Nation and fantastic graphics, by the way. And uh, the second one is from Tammy's Nomadic RV Living, which just came out uh, around the same time. And I'm going to play her audio for you to listen to now. And and basically, what she's saying is talking about becoming nomadic as a single female. And the, in, and the issues that people should think about. And I, what I like about it is she's just being honest of just saying, hey, this is what's out there. This is what you need to know about. Here's a few things that's happened to me. And all these videos, all this nation stuff is a crock of you know what. And the best way I can just talk about this is let someone else put their two cents out there. So... Without further ado, here's Tammy. Um, Today, I want to talk about um, RV life, nomadic life, van dwelling, RV dwelling, and I want to be serious about it. Because the fact is, is even though it was one of the most amazing adventures I've ever had, it was also one of the most destructive, scary times that I ever had. Now, back in December of 2016, when I started watching nomadic videos, and Mr. Bob was one of them, Carolyn's RV was another, and a few others, um, I was totally convinced that females, single females, can get out there and be nomadic. I, I never stopped to think that most of the people I watched on YouTube, one, traveled with a tribe, two, were so ugly that their dog wouldn't chase them, or three, that they were lying. And the but one lady buzzed all of her hair off. She looked like a boy. You know, being a nomad, living out in the middle of nowhere, is an absolute amazing adventure. But there are so many dangers, you guys. Dangers I never took into consideration before I packed up, moved into an RV, and rolled out. The dangers started immediately for me. And I have videos down below 
from the day I started boondocking until the day I ran from boondocking because somebody tried to break in my RV in the middle of nowhere. Our yeah, nomadic life is dangerous. It's dangerous for single females. It's dangerous for couples. Let's think about it. Before the nomadic movement started a few years ago, the only people who lived that existence were criminals. For the most part, there were people dodging the, the law, they'd been kicked out of their homes, um, they were what we call undesirables in society. And, and I'm not saying that they all were, but the fact is, is criminals can't rent apartments, they can't get jobs. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on. And we have to realize and we have to understand that when we're parked in the middle of nowhere, we're at the mercy of people like that. People who are murderers, people who are sexual deviant, people who will rob you and not think nothing of it. Um, they're just people out there who have no empathy, no conscience. And as a single female nomad, I encountered some of the worst. Um, I know that for nine months I was docked at an RV resort and I don't know that God didn't do that for my own protection you guys. I had a stalker, I still have a stalker, who I met while I was out boondocking. Um, I, do I feel it's safe for single females? No, absolutely not. And when you're first starting out, um, I, I hit up people on channels. I hit up a lot of these mega subscriber channels. I asked for help. Where do I go? How do I do this? I never got any help. None. Nada. Zip. And so I started out all alone. All alone with me and my dog, Chloe. And Chloe, she didn't have an aggressive bone in her body. She was big and looked like she may have. But an example, one time I was sitting in a Walmart in Flagstaff and some guy was trying to break in the RV and, and Chloe licked him to death. I, I actually had to walk out and bust the guy doing it. So with that being said, all this bull about how safe it is for females to be singular nomadic and there are no, no tribe is bullshit. Not only that, you could get into a tribe where you've got a sicko. I did. I did. I got into a tribe where there's sicko a, a, a dwelt. And, and you know what? I've been suffering the consequences ever since. So we as women have to know that we put ourselves, unbeknownst to us even at times, in line of jeopardy, in line of six pervs, and, and through no fault of our own. You know, guys, I've put on weight in the last, since I've been here, in the last nine months. I've put on 10 pounds. I think that has to do with when I was really thin, I just it seemed like the, I couldn't get the guys off my back. And I'm not bragging and I'm not trying to be conceited or nothing, but the fact is, is that I don't want to be so appealing that I tr attract the perverts. I'm just saying. Now, it could be all in my mind, and, and, and it could be the fact that I was so thin when I attract, attracted that stalker. But the fact was, that he wasn't the only one. I had trouble with, with men from the day I went out. From the day I left, I had trouble with men at the RV resort. I, you know, as a single female, and, and especially if you're a single mother with children, you've got to protect yourselves. You've got to, my suggestion is that you would go out and for two weeks at a time. Don't get rid of your stick and brick. Don't do it. Go out for two weeks, two, one or two weeks at a time and, and get a feel of the land. And whatever you do, you guys, be careful who you friend out there. The fact is there is danger out there. There's danger with lone females being anywhere. If females get abducted from shopping malls, think how easy it is for some sicko to abduct you out of the middle of nowhere, to follow you around and stalk you. It's not a fun existence. It's just not. So take my heed. 
Yeah, that it, there's something really th thrilling about being in a nomadic life. But there is also many, many, many dangers, you guys. So many dangers. I, I just can't even begin to tell you. You know, there it's not only the dangers. You're either hot or you're cold. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's one of the high subscriber channels right now. His new series is How to Stay Cold as a Nomad in the Summertime. Oh, I can tell you that in, in less than 30 seconds. Go north. Go as high as elevation as you can because you are not going to cool down an RV, a van, or a car via a tent with an AC unit. I lived in a Class A that had two huge ACs and they couldn't keep the place cool because it just goes right out the windows and the doors and the walls. So the fact is, is don't go bother watching his videos or his series on how to stay cold because they're bunk. They're bullshit. Strip off and get into your shorts and your muscle shirts and climb north. Go to, go to Oregon, go to Washington, and go up on a mountain. Is the only way as a nomad, you're going to stay cool. And then you'll probably freeze in the morning. But the fact is, is that it's not all it's cracked up to be, you guys. Yep, there's thrill and there's adventure and there's doing it yourself and self-survival. And I dug all that part. I dug all of that. And I have to say that I proved to myself that I could do it. But I didn't have good sleep. I didn't have good rest. I was terrorized the whole time. The whole time. I remember two weeks and two weeks only that I felt secure and safe. And that's really sad to say. Anyway, I hope you would take in consideration if you're planning on becoming a nomad, a female, I think even male nomads are at risk. But you guys got to remember, you have got to remember that undesirables, people in society says, you're not, you're not welcome here. They can't get jobs. They can't get apartments. They're the felons live out there too. And more so out there than in the society in which we dwell. I'm just saying. So remember. Arm yourself, however you see fit. Uh, I'm an avid gun carrier, and I and I advocate I advocate guns. I have, I've, I learned to shoot when I was just a baby, just a kid, five years old. I was shooting guns. My children were, and I advocate it. But the fact is, is if you're sleeping and you're in a hard sleep, no matter if that gun is under your pillow or not, if you wake up to somebody on top of you beating you or stabbing you. How are you going to reach that weapon? Just saying. I'm just saying. Be safe, my friends. And to those of you who want to be nomadic, take everything, and I mean everything, into consideration. I hope you guys have a blessed day. And I'm really sorry I had to put this video out, but it's not been good in my good conscience to let Everybody who wants to be nomadic, go out there without a humble talking to about the factual danger that there is. Don't believe Mr. Bob when he gets all these females on there talking about how they feel safe. The fact is, most of them, got they look like men. And then I'm not being mean, I'm just saying. Half them females don't look female. And if you happen to be a female me, like me who likes to wear girly clothes or girly hair, makeup, nails... It's hard to disguise the fact that you're a female. Have a blessed day. Remember to love yourself because if you don't love you, ain't nobody going to love you. So there you go, guys. There's the uh, uh, the story I wanted to share with you on Tammy's uh, nomadic RV life uh, video. And I uh, found it very interesting. And I want to share one more thing I just saw the other day. And, you know, uh, at my age, I've been kind of looking at different places to live in environments. And I got a kick out of some young couples that are uh, down in Mexico and they're checking life out and all that stuff. And more than once have I heard this comment and uh, uh, compare, you know, con comparing people in Mexico to Americans. And, you know, just like in any country, there's people that are, you know, uh, looking for money, hurting for money, uh, unemployed, uh, need money. But the difference was 
they said was was kind of interesting is down in Mexico when people need money they try to do something for it so one of the things that will drive you crazy you'll be at an intersection and someone will say I'll clean your windshield or do this or do that for a dollar or, or a peso or whatever they want you know down there and uh, the the philosophy down there the the thought process is they know that they need to work to make some money it's a given so they're not sitting on street corners they're not holding signs they're not holding cups out they are doing whatever they can within their skills whatever they they can possibly do to make a buck and so that'll drive you crazy too but the philosophy is yes i want some money from you but i'll do something for it now compare that to what we have going on up here and and how that may even fall into some of this nomadic stuff we got these people that are going out and trying to beat the system in a way I want lower overhead I don't want to work for a living I don't want to work for the big man I want you to be uh, uh, send me money buy my stickers uh, buy my Amazon link um, you know <laughs> I want you to give me money for every video I produce and uh, uh, we just want to live free and we'll make really good pictures for you. How's that sound? And uh, that's what this, the new generation is doing. Now, let's take a step back. What was the nomadic folk people before all this hype? Well, I'd have to say it had to be a lot like what this gal subscribed in, uh, in her video is there's a lot of people out there and I, I'm not saying this is right or wrong that can't fit back into society uh, maybe they did just get out of prison or something like that and they can't rent a place they can't get jobs so they go nomadic and some people go out nomadic and try to live a great life but also a lot of them are shady and this was before the hype this was before the YouTubes this was before all this is going on there well those people not only are they there now but it's probably worse than ever because of the economic situation rents are going up everywhere and if you don't believe that I actually do some websites for a couple of uh, RV parks and guess what I end up doing every year I keep raising their rates and what's that doing to anybody that may be living there long term they're getting pushed out they can't afford to stay there anymore the rents are getting even the small run down kind of parks are 500 600 a month on top of maybe they have a even an RV payment uh, that just is adding on to this homeless RV situation we got going on which is adding on to the nomadic lifestyle and what do we got we got this guy it looks like some culty kind of dude um, reminds me of a guy that used to have a big uh, ranch up in uh, Oregon um, <laughs> and, uh, had quite the cult going on there so yeah so pretty soon people send in the money pretty soon he'll uh, ask for their worldly belongings and um, who knows maybe they'll go around poisoning the community or something <laughs> I don't know go terrorize Madras anyway um, if they start shaving their heads and wearing like sheets maybe like red sheets and stuff like that and you know chanting some interesting songs and stuff uh, I think it's gonna be time to be really concerned this guy that they all worship this Bob nation I can tell you you can look it up you can find it the dude is doing over I'm gonna use the low number but it goes higher He's doing over 5000 a month, which there's people out there, that's 60000 a year. And yeah, he, pay, pays ta he better be paying taxes on that. He gets 1099 Along with his, when you watch his videos, he's got his little Amazon store in the background and all that stuff. Uh, the guy's making some good dough, yet he still you know, um, tries to portray himself as, uh, you know, uh, some... Uh, nomadic uh, poor guy living out of a van 
and uh it's that's and then he's like more and more he's becoming a believer in himself in this culty thing called bob nation and it's getting worse and worse and worse and how many times does history have to replay itself he will crash and burn one way or another and usually they do it to themselves and uh, it's just a matter of time but in the meantime how many people will get hurt how many people uh, sell everything they got and hop, hop into a van and do what that lady did and, and try to live that nomadic lifestyle and uh, find out that the little tribe, the little nation, really doesn't isn't there for for you, nor should they be. I mean, they, why should you be living like that? Well, you have to depend on a tribe, on a nation. Um, this is getting kind of sick. It's getting kind of twisted, and it's getting kind of humorous at the same time. And um, but you know, hey, the guy's getting tons of followers. He's getting tons of people watching, and he's uh, you know trying to describe how to use the best bucket and how to you know how to uh, stay warm uh, when it's cold and when it's cold how to stay warm. Which the lady was right. If it's too hot, you go north. If it's too cold, you go south. And it's just that easy. So before I go any farther, I got to make sure and um, put in, um, I, I like to get a word in for one of our sponsors or one of the people who have been supporting us. Uh, so let me uh, get that out of the way. And uh, and I'm not doing it because it's an inconvenience. I'm telling you because it's a great service, which is the Ford Re Re Refrigeration Group. So here is their little blurb, and you've got to listen to it and give them a holler. Uh, they've got a program that can't be beat. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV Refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. So uh, getting back to the old Bob Nation kind of thing. So where do you think this is going to go, guys? Where? How far do you think it's going to get before it starts going sour? Uh, they'll do their little RTR, which is you know, you know, rubber tramp uh, you know, uh, yacht club. And uh, that'll probably get too big or too wild and too many crazy people and everybody wants to be the boss and uh, something's going to happen. Or uh, maybe they're out in uh, one of these places on their 14 night stay and some of these unique characters uh, loses it. And, uh, you know, and I live in Arizona. I'm probably be the first one to hear about Oh, some crazy shooting in some barren BLM land that uh, some guy went nuts because, uh, you know, or something. Um, I don't know. It's, you know, it's going to happen. Mark my words. Remember this show. Remember this episode. Remember RV Talk Radio. Remember that this, that something will happen because history always replays itself. I wish people would learn, but um, you know this fatty thing of uh, and and these videos and uh, you know and everything looks so wonderful, uh, and uh, it's gonna go sour a matter of time, and so you get people like us who are trying to warn everyone, just like when every other crisis comes along, going there's problems here. We've seen this before. Something's going to happen, and one or two people might listen, and then some 
something big's going to happen. And maybe we won't hear about it so much because the media is really good about hiding stuff, but uh, it'll slip out through the YouTube and uh, we'll get the real story. And uh, some someone's going to go down <laughs> and uh, someone's going to get in trouble. Someone could even end up with a lawsuit or end up uh, in jail because they're, you know, got this group going and people are giving them money and he's supporting them in certain ways and, and something goes south and sure in heck, uh, uh, he'll have to go super nomadic away from his group, away from everything. And in the meantime, a lot of people are going to be hurt. A lot of people are going to be out stuff. A lot of people are going to get out there and find out this isn't very safe. What am I doing out here? Anyway, I, uh, it's kind of sad, but you know, line screw, I got to tell you that video. Oh my God. I thought I was going to, I had to play it like twice, three times. I, I never cracked up. I was like, <sighs> the toast thing. Oh my God. <laughs> the deliverance of the nomadic. <laughs> Oh my God, it was awesome. So good job, buddy. Well, guys, on my last show, I was talking about making some changes to the RV world for us, me and Sherry, and I'm not going to change a thing because after we went to an RV show and realized that uh, being underwater in your RV and then maybe thinking about letting go of my truck and then thinking about all this stuff, I'm going this isn't this is ugly so uh we can just like you know what we're gonna ride this out so you know sherry and i are going from the generational thing of in the 50s to our 60s and uh, we want to be in really good shape when we hit the 62 mark and if we keep things the way they are uh we'll we'll have no trouble with that but we um are getting into some new endeavors and one of the things you might notice is um uh, yes, we sell some products too, <laughs> but it's not because we're surviving to be nomadics. It's because uh, we're actually getting into a lot more things. And one of them is uh, print uh, t-shirts and stuff like that and cups and all that stuff. So you may have noticed if you go to RV Talk Radio on Facebook, you will see that you can now get RV Travel Buddy, uh, Travel uh, RV Talk Radio, sorry, um, cups now or mugs. And they're really nice, and they're actually the most affordable ones we've been able to get printed up. And uh, we also, by the time you see or hear this show, um, we'll have uh, uh, a hat, too, that's actually pretty reasonably priced considering that we're doing smaller quantities. And uh, if you guys want a T-shirt or anything like that, we can actually we'll put them on the site, and it's uh, in the shopping cart, which is w more than just RV stuff. It's not just for this. This is, but we're putting some of our products from our shows in there. Um, if you go to rangerrobshop.com, dot com, I'm gonna put a link down below, along with all the hundreds of links I'm putting down below for this show. Um, we'll have all kinds of really cool products in there. And uh, we got some great Arizona products in there that we're making some shirts and stuff like that. But we have products in there, regular, regular products. And then we actually are having some products made over in China that are long-term products have nothing to do. Well, they can be involved in RVing, but uh, what we're doing is stepping up um, our game. And Sherry and I are going, you know what, after going and looking at a new RV and stuff, and, and we we actually live pretty comfortable, and I still felt like I was poor. And it's like, there's only one way to fix that. Either buy a van and become a nomadic and join the Bob Nation, or <laughs> get a job. <laughs> well, I'm not getting a job, but do something about it. If you are not making enough money or you're not happy doing the job you're doing, then there is options out there. And I'm not going to go into what we're going into, but um, uh, this is what we're talking about. If you don't like your job, you don't like your boss, you don't like working nine to five, great, no problem. There is stuff you can do, but you got to hustle. And usually it takes money to make money. And, and, and it, no matter what you're doing, even when they say that you can do stuff for free inventory and stuff, you still have to spend money. It's just how it is. And of course, if you're going to 
make a product or anything like that. You've got to invest in development and packaging and all kinds of stuff. And that's exactly what we're doing. Along with, if you didn't know already, we have radio stations. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, and my wife works hard every time. By the time she gets to 62, it'd be nice to have something on the side that, once again, if maybe we want to take the RV that we already own, it'll be paid for, and go, you know, leave the house for a couple of months and come back and not be financially worried about things because we have a supplemental income coming on top of our pension and Social Security stuff. That's what I'm talking about. And the youngins out there, I don't, I don't blame you for wanting the free, the freedom, and I don't blame you for. I mean, traveling is awesome and stuff like that, but you have to pay your dues. You have to put some money away. Um, it may feel good to you right now, and I know that there's nothing I could probably say that would make you feel any different. But if I could instantly age you by twenty or thirty years. And then tell you these same things we're telling you now. Maybe you'd listen. Um, yeah, I mean, when you're in your 20s, from 20 to 30s, I even told my kids too, enjoy life, go see the world, do your thing, all that stuff. But uh, uh, you, you're you going to have to settle down. You're going to have to dig in. You're going to have to build a foundation of something. And uh, living in a free and carefree world, it it sounds great, and, it, and you'll do great in your 20s, and you'll probably do great in your 30s, and then it starts changing, you're starting to get older, and things get a little harder, and the economy changes, and things that we're doing today is not necessarily around anymore tomorrow. There may not be a YouTube 20 years from now. There may not be uh, uh, some of the things that we're doing today. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? How are you going to pay for stuff? How are you going to take care of your health? Oh, well, I don't have any health problems. <laughs> you will. <laughs> Remember what I keep saying, history replays itself. People get older. People have issues. Things come up. Uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to live in a van all your life? I'm just saying. Anyway. Um, so I wanted to just kind of go back and uh, remind people that, yeah, I mean, me and Sherry, we got little projects going on, and one of them is the new rangerrobshop.com. And uh, we also have some Ranger Rob products coming out. Uh, does, it's not an RV product, <laughs> anyway. And uh, we, uh, we're trying to work on some unique items and having some fun and making a little spare income, and not because we have to, not because we need you to support our channel. Is because Sherry and I need them while well, we want to make some supplemental income so we can play a little more when we retire, which is not now. It's going to happen later on when we can go a little longer and stuff. And so we want something in place. And we're not depending on RVers and we're not depending on people donating. And I'm not setting up a patron. I'm setting up an online business that has to do something totally outside of the realm of RVing. Um, if it works, great. If it doesn't, so be it. At least I tried. It's better than just jo joining the Bob Nation. <sighs> so I don't. <laughs> anyway, get a chance. Look in our description. Check out the video from Line Screw. Check out the video from Tammy. Um, check out our new shopping cart. Go into the printing section. You'll see our cups and uh, hats and stuff like that. We have some really cute stuff in there. So uh, check it out. We'd really appreciate it. If you buy something, we would just... I. All I can say is thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Uh, you'll just be donating to the Rob Scribner, Sherry Scribner Foundation of Retirement Fund in, uh, in the future. <laughs> That's all there is to it. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to sell you an ebook. How's that sound? Anyway, yeah, let's move on. Okay, guys, so it wasn't past an hour that I took a little break here <laughs> of course it was just a second to you guys but I decided to watch another video from some folks we did an interview with a couple of months ago which was uh Dan and Jean I think uh Nevada and oh my god the video was about 
them finding someone sleeping in their bed, in their RV, non-coherent, up in Squim, Washington. I rest my pa- my case. <laughs> Just can't believe this stuff. So they, you know, and you know, and they had trouble in Portland. Their car got broken into, and then they get up to Washington, and they are in a place called Squim, Washington, which is one of my favorite places, and never, ever, ever had any problems there. I usually I wouldn't stay at the casino there, but it is a good, good nice casino. But uh, I'd say like John Wayne Marina, which is just up the road. And uh, apparently they got out of their RV and were walking around the parking lot and came back and they were going about uh, leveling their RV and stuff. And someone, uh, his wife came in and go and <laughs> came back with shock because he was up at the driver's area. It's like someone's sleeping in our bed. Oh my God. <laughs> It's like, that would not be funny. I'm telling you, would not be funny. And uh, they looked pretty shook up and they wanted to get the hell out of there in one of the most safest places I ever been. But I imagine that, you know, all safety, all comfortableness is gone. And I rest my case once again that things are changing. And I'm telling you, as the more and more that this kind of stuff goes on, the more and more people kind of figure out the RVers got these nice places and don't necessarily lock them or they're easy to get into. And, uh, um, weird people. I mean, you can have these problems whether you have an RV or not, but, um, boy, those guys are really getting uh, nailed with a lot of stuff lately. And I don't blame them for their uneasiness. And, and, and what I'm reporting in this particular show is safety. Talking about safety and how it's changing. More people are doing this. Uh, it's a matter of time that the gray people, the folks that are out to hurt others, are going to figure out the RV situation where a couple is boondocking and realize that they're vulnerable and they're going to start taking advantage of it if they're not already doing it and we're just not hearing about it that much. I, I, I keep doing these shows and I keep talking about this stuff and I know it sounds grim. Nobody loves RVing more than me and Sherry. I love it. But Sherry and I tend to also stay with the crowds in, in RV parks and um, uh, the boondocking is, seems to be... It's when you're kind of away from the crowd. It seems to be where people are having these issues. And then this last thing with Tammy uh, doing her video and talking about the safety of the odd, uh, you know, um, interesting characters in these nomadic areas that, you know, are living out of their vans and stuff. And, of course, uh, when you're in a, you know, a half million dollar RV and you're staying in a Walmart parking lot along with, every other sort of RVer and nomadic in there, you're going to get some interesting characters. And then like in Flagstaff, uh, Arizona here, they're literally letting the homeless stay more than one night in the RV, uh, in the Walmarts and stuff, because they prefer to see them there than have them park in places they shouldn't be. So they're kind of turning the other cheek, you know, and... um. I don't think we all of us should be turning the other cheek. I think we ought to start thinking about, especially this boondocking stuff, of really thinking this through and uh, being safe. I mean, I, I don't suggest quitting it, but uh, guys, let me let me ask you one question. You and your lovely bride, maybe you don't even have a child yet. Maybe you have a child with you. And... Maybe I'm old school and I kind of tend tend to think guys are kind of protectors. What happens? How would you feel? You go through all this like, honey, let's sell a house. Let's go travel the world and let's be nomadic and live minimalist. And something happened to your family. How would you feel? Really? I mean, how would you feel about that? Would that bother you at all? Well, it was the other person's fault. Well, you... 
at least I've always been brought up to kind of protect my family and try not to put them in circumstances where they're in danger. I don't know about you, but Line Screw, myself, Tammy, we're telling you, we're warning you, we're suggesting to you, there might be some danger out there now. And it may not be what it's cracked up to be in this. I can tell you one thing, courtside is getting crazy. I just, I don't know whether I should be saying, hey guys, stop it, whatever. But I, I guess even Tammy's message was, you need to know this stuff. And somebody needs to be telling you. And these, this guy, it looks like Moses, <laughs> the Bob Nation, all he wants is he's a glutton for punishment. He wants uh, 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 misery likes company. And that's exactly what it is. Sign up to my misery nation. That's exactly what he's asking for. Is that really what you want? So before I uh, let go of the uh, Jen and Dan Nevada story, I want to remind you that Squim is actually a very nice area. <laughs> and, it, and it's probably one of the last areas that I, I imagine it's changing a little bit, but it's still a beautiful area and it tends to have be small, small town living. Squim's kind of growing a lot. It's a retirement community, but um, all in all, that whole peninsula is a really pretty place to go. And I, I hope that people don't get a bad, wrong idea about Squim in that area because it's really a nice area that was a real freak in nature that happened to them at that casino the seven cedars casino by the way is a very nice casino <laughs> and uh, oh my god i really feel for those two i i know that's gotta be heartbreaking and it's gotta really start making you look over your shoulder more and i i just my heart bleeds for what they went through so uh, i hope uh, if they listen to our show that they uh, uh realize that me and sherry truly understand their discomfort but i uh, i also grew up there and squim i actually kept my boat into john wayne marina there for years i love that area and uh, it's so sad truly sad that's one of the most beautiful areas in the world and squim is a cute little town and they got a great dog park, by the way. Anyway, and some really good restaurants. And uh, the Dungeon of Spit is really a cool place to go visit. But yeah, it's really sad. And they're over in Forks um, while, while I'm doing this show. And it's beautiful up there, too. I, I urge them to go check out Lake Gozette and um, go look at the old fishing towns up there, uh, CQ and Nia Bay, uh, a lot of history, but uh, it's a little wishy-washy up there in <laughs> Nia Bay. Be careful. <laughs> so that's another area you don't want to leave your RV unlocked. But anyway, uh, uh, yeah, my heart bleeds to them. But once again, it kind of went along with this show. And uh, I'm sure that they would agree, too, that safety and common sense and starting to rethink things a little bit might be a good idea. So I did want to uh, kind of talk about real quick what's been going on down here in Arizona. <laughs> and uh, we have been getting just nailed almost every day. We had a break today on monsoons. And if you haven't seen a monsoon in Arizona, they're really cool, but they're not. <laughs> um, from a distance, you get these beautiful, you know, you get the lightning and um, what a what a show it puts on. But if the little systems come over your house, you could get from, you know, a calm, warm, hot day at 105 degrees, and all of a sudden, 30, 40, 50, 60 mile per hour winds come out of nowhere. And uh, pretty soon you got things flying all, all over the place, which is from the palm trees and stuff. Uh, we have one of those tent gazebos we bought at Big Lots, Thank God, I, I just know what monsoons are like. And if you've watched one of my videos from last year, we lost a 14-foot a, uh, uh, sorrel cactus last year, and we weren't home when it happened. But 
Uh, it took. It had to be pretty damn windy to knock that thing over. Anyway, I have tethers into the ground along with the tethers at the feet of the uh, gazebo just to hold it down. And um, it'd just be a real bummer to come home and find my gazebo in somebody else's yard. <laughs> it's kind of like those uh, people I have those... Uh, uh, jumping things in her backyards and always ends up in someone else's yard. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, so we've been getting those a lot, which means when we get those, we get tons of rain, which is good. We need to rain. And my plants have been quite uh, appreciative of that. Um, of course, we constantly have to clean the pool out because of all the stuff flying around. And it's very dusty, and it's caused, uh, because when the rain comes in, it really dumps rain. Uh, of course, all of our washes, and there's always that one person that tries to drive through it. Um, but some houses down here are taking some severe damage, and there's even been literally uh, palm trees, which is, you know, they can take a lot of wind. Uh, they actually caught one on tape, snapping it um, in half and landing in someone's house. And uh, so, yeah, there's been some uh, damage. So The worst thing you want is to have one of those monsoons right over your house. Oh my God! Um, it, they uh, in that lightning uh, this year, two kids got hit by lightning. Last year, another guy got hit by lightning. You really, I mean, it's fascinating to look at that stuff. And I've found myself running out there with a video camera, and I'm kind of like, uh, this is kind of stupid. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it, it, they're kind of dangerous, um, but they're amazing to watch. I'd rather see them from a distance and. Uh, what a light show. Oh, my God. You, if you've never really seen lightning, uh, when you, a monsoon goes through, you will see a lightning show that you've probably never seen before. It's beautiful, deadly, scary, every emotion, very wet and soggy, and then it's over. It just goes through. It clears up, warms up, dries out, and it's over. And then the next day, it happens again. Um, it'll happen a couple of days in a row and then we'll get a break and then it'll happen again. <laughs> and, uh, and I think we have some more coming this week. So yeah, these monsoons are amazing and needed and it's quite the phenomenon here in uh, Arizona. You would think, um, well, where it comes down to is we get more of our rain in the summer than we'll see all year round. I know it's kind of weird. We're, uh, um, yeah, wintertime is dry. We don't really get rain at all. Um, we'll get, you know, once in a while. But this is, when you look at our rain totals, you'll see if you look at when it comes, it's now. We get it in the summer. When, when it rains here, we'll get one inch, two inches in like an hour. <laughs> so you imagine what that does to the roads and what it does to the washes. And you imagine all that rain, two inches of rain dumping in the hillsides up above. That water has got to go somewhere, and guess where it goes? It goes down here to the valley and hits those washes. And, uh, boy, you don't want to be in those washes when all of a sudden that rain decides, all that water decides to come down one of those things. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. But, yeah, that's Arizona. Well, by the way, guys, I want to take the time to, I am grateful for all of you guys who listen to our regular shows. I guess I should start picking up the pace and start getting the regular shows out. I was really concentrating on when we got back from uh, our trip coming up next month, um, where we are actually getting up to the RV. And uh, we were going to bring it down here, but we're going to leave it up there. But we're going to actually move it from the property it's sitting on and go take it to an RV park for a few days and flush out the tanks and, and just kind of clean her up. We're going to actually do our carpets too while we're there and get it all ready for the winter and uh, leave it up there again because we'll be going back up in the winter time uh, to check in Sherry's folks, and uh, which is good because she just broke her heel. So I was like, oh, Lord. So, uh, yeah, we go. Um, we're glad it's there. So the RVs turned out to be a really good tool for us. Uh, for now and uh, hopefully uh, as we get closer to our second retirement you might say uh, it will be ready for us and paid off <laughs> so that's the new plan till we change it <laughs> you know how that goes but um, uh, yeah so we're kind of like 
getting excited, so I got to take the canopy off the truck before we go. And then that's easy. You just, you know, what you do is you bribe my daughter to bring her husband over and her her uh, 17 year old son, bribe them with some really good food, and have them help us take the canopy off the truck. <laughs> it's bribery. You know how that works. <laughs> Anyway, uh, by the way, I also wanted to comment on um, the uh, RV USA show. They were talking about um, uh, Camping World and some of the scams going on there, which I'm sure is going on. Um, but I want to also put in at least two cents of saying our experience. We bought our RV from Camping World up in Burlington, Washington, and it was actually a good experience. Um uh, I kind of wish I didn't finance it as many years as I did, but um, that was our fault, not theirs. Um, and we did have warranty work done, and we did have a uh, uh, extended warranty on it. And because when we bought it, it was actually 10 months old. It was actually used. Someone bought it, used it a little bit, and traded it right back in again. So we got a good deal on it. And they honored and did a really good job with our warranty work. And um, I... I I don't have any complaints, but I can certainly see the issues that are going on in there. And some of these bigger ones, like down here in Arizona, we have a camping world and it's a big outfit and uh, they're quite competitive down here. I imagine that kind of crap's going on for sure. There's no doubt. Um, however, it didn't happen to me and Sherry. So to be in all fairness, our experience went well. Um, and, but, you know, uh, actually it's gone well in most of the places we bought. Maybe it's our own fault, other people's fault that have the bad issues and stuff, but or they didn't know better, and maybe she, Sherry and I didn't know better, but everything looks okay with our stuff, and uh, we are pretty much have to say we're happy with the service. And um, they definitely honored the Good Sam warranty system because I had to have a jack replaced and a couple of little things and by gosh they um, it was a great deal it worked out well and I'm glad I got the extended warranty when I did um, just for my first year so uh, yeah um, I gotta say that but I, I do urge everybody always be careful with their financing uh, I think they've discovered something that all of us really need to keep our eyes open on uh, when it comes to buying RVs, and especially when you go to the big ticket RV places that are pumping out, you know, have thousands on the lot, um, those salesmen are, you know, they're aggressive and they'll do anything they can do to sell you an RV, and even if they manipulate the paperwork. And uh, watch the fees, no doubt. We're going to watch the fees and shop around. Just don't settle the first place you go. Once you go to the camping world, go down here. We got La Mesa. We got other places. Go check out those RV places. And then down in uh, Tucson, they got a great big place down there too. And uh, yeah, shopping is probably the best advice for anybody buying an RV, new or used. Shop, compare your prices, go back to the people you're happy with, and then go ahead and get that RV you've always wanted. But just be careful. And, of course, before I go, I want to remind everybody in the description, you will find the links that I'm talking to about on these shows, uh, the line screw, the Tammy, and also I was talking about our new shopping cart. Uh, go visit them. Go check out some of our new printed stuff. If there's something you like for RV Talk Radio, like a hat, or maybe you don't want a hat, maybe you want a cup, well, there's a cup center in there, but I don't want to have half hats yet. Hopefully, by the time you see this show, I'll have a hat in there. Uh, maybe you want hoodies. Maybe you want us to do something. And we're going with the most reasonable prices we can that you know, makes sense. Um, and, uh, yeah, if you like one, uh, they're there. And, uh, no, we're not doing it because we're starving and have to buy groceries. We're doing it because we have a business that goes well beyond just RVs. Um, and it's something that Sherry and I uh, have going. And we actually are going well beyond. Uh, we're going actually into products and stuff. And, and it's something we always wanted to do, and we want to do it from home, and we can do it while we travel. Anyway, so check them out. I really appreciate it. It's called the Ranger Rob Shop. And and you go, where did that Ranger Rob come from? And I have to tell you, it was an old nickname I got when I used to go hunting and fishing a lot with my friends. And it was a CB. We used CBs a lot back in those days. And anyway, uh, I was in my boat up at Nia Bay fishing or something, and one of my friends said, oh, hey, Ranger Rob, you catch any fish yet? And anyway. <laughs> 
the name stuck. So I bought the domain back in the 90s, and I own rangerrob.com, and so we started a shopping cart, and now it's Ranger Rob Shop, and um, we actually have some other Ranger Rob products. I just can't say them out loud yet until they're actually official. And um, we'll tell you more about it. And, and, and the reason I will share it with you is it might be something that you could do with your RV travels, or maybe you're retired like me and Sherry and like to learn how to make a little extra income. Let us try it out first, see how it goes. If it's successful and it works, we'll tell you about it without making you pay for anything or joining memberships. We'll just tell you what we're doing because um, that's all we are. Is we just tell you how it is and we try to help people and we don't try to take advantage of them. And we're certainly not pushing products down your throat because I got to buy groceries, <laughs> you know, because I. I had a real job and I have a real pension and real social security and I did things the way most Americans should be doing stuff. They kind of uh, went through life and you did your family stuff. You kind of saved some money and you did the best you can and we could have done much better, but hey, it is what it is. So anyway, I do want to thank everybody once again so much for uh, listening to RV Talk Radio uh, and being devoted. Love the notes we get. And once again, I'll get a little more consistent. It'll still be sporadic until our halfway through September when we get back from our trip. But then I'm going to have all kinds of new RV stories and all kinds of new stuff. And uh, uh, we'll go from there. So, yeah. Um, uh, thanks again very much. And I hope that we get a little bit of a laugh out of the show. And I hope a little reality check that we uh, share this information with these people. And uh, we got to realize that, I mean, all of us, we see videos and things that look wonderful. Like these people live in Mexico. And he's like, oh, maybe I should move to Mexico. Well, you remember it's a show. And it's like nothing beats actually going out there and testing it a little bit. One of the best advices I've heard about nomadic stuff, don't sell nothing. Don't do anything. Just go do it for two weeks or something and then come back and do it a couple more times and then really get a taste of it and see if you really like pooping in a bucket. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I'm just teasing. But uh, hey, thumbs up to Bob Nation. <laughs> anyway, guys, be safe. Buy yourself an RV. Keep in touch. Send us comments. Be nice. And we'll talk to you next time. <laughs> Bye. Hey, thank you so much for listening to RV Talk Radio. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the world, all over the nomadic world, and especially with the Bob Nation. Till next time, bye.